Namaste, welcome. This is Thomas, and this is Lighthouse Yoga, Lighthouse Tarot, and Astrology. Uh, we were looking at uh, Stellarium, the virtual representation of the sky. Uh, it's got some basic landscape here. Uh, it's modeled after a place in France. Um, but I'm in Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago. Uh, lots of snow on the ground here. It is February 17th in 2021 um, and we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the sky um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the cardinal points on the, the red south southwest west you know all the rest and um, taking off the sky here removing the atmosphere we can see the the lineup of the planets we got the fixed air over there with Fomahalt, and I'm going to put the constellation art up to give us a general representation of uh, the boundaries, where everything's at. But of course, we can look at the specific locations if we need to. Um, I'm much more interested in the, the symbolism, um, the psychology of the representations that we see in the patterns in the heavens, and uh, looking at the zodiac zodiacal signs as as uh, archetypes uh, the planets themselves also archetypes and these these figures that occupy uh, the, the human psyche and um, that have been you know part of this from from time immemorial so they say you know from ancient times right there every culture has stories of the gods and every culture has uh, stories of you know how how they interact with human beings, and um, this is kind of the 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 play that we're looking at, and seeing if it has relevance to our own life. And it's not so much that these things are are making things happen, um, or we're doing things as a result of these things, but we can understand the symbolical representation as giving us perspective on our on our own life. So when, when we see certain planets combine, we can understand that there, it's possible for those energies in our own psyche to combine. And sometimes they harmonize, sometimes they conflict. And through the harmony, how can we you know, navigate and, and flow? And through the, con the conflict, how can we uh, find perspective and adjust, learn to adapt? And so there, there are always, there's always a lesson uh, even within the so-called uh, good times, right? There's a there's a way to to learn to flow with with that energy. So we're looking at um, the sun in Aquarius and Venus in Capricorn, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury. Uh, all of these um, wonderful planets are in the cardinal sign of Capricorn, right? And that's Cardinal Earth. And we have that feminine axis of the cardinal cross opposite Cancer. And if um, Cancer is the home, then Capricorn is the state. Uh, it's, it's the external authority. There's sort of the, the home structure, right? The feeling of, um, of security in, in, in that kind of family unit or maybe the tribal unit. And then there's sort of the, the larger societal governmental structures, um, the authorities uh, that are, we could say, um, bigger than just what we would say are, you know, are our own authority, right? There's, there are certain things we can't cross. And I, I, would, I would consider this to also be a representation of, we could say, natural law, right? Sometimes, um, you know, people use the example of gravity, as a kind of natural law, right? That these things attract and they can't help but attract. So if you step off a, a one foot ledge versus a 50 foot cliff, right? Um, the, the result's gonna be the same, right? You go down because of that, that force. And, and we see this as you know, sort of a play of, of that natural authority of natural law, right? This is, this is how nature works, you could say. Um, and of course, we, we sometimes think that those those laws are up for debate, um, and uh, we're invited to test and and find out, 
you know, and I, I'm chuckling if you can't hear it in my voice, but, you know, it's oftentimes when we test, um, we, we see that, oh, indeed, <laughs> those things do exist. Um, that, that barrier is there, and, and it's probably there for good reason. And, and we're welcome to, you know, seek and investigate what that, what that good reason is. All right. Um, the symbolism here we have in, in Capricorn, right? So representing the, you know, those, those external structures, the, the authority, the government, um, the natural law of things. And we have the, the throat chakra with Mercury retrograde still, you know, another three or four days. Um, Jupiter, of course, debilitated uh, in Capricorn. With, um, it's always fascinating to me because Jupiter is, is our, our, our desires. Right? And, and Jupiter represents that, that expansive quality, right? That, that movement towards... Uh, something else you could say if not something bigger or better um, something different in, in any case and, uh, and and in many ways Jupiter is is sort of the the movement and expansion of the empire um, and and certainly empire and government sort of go hand in hand so it, it's it's a curious thing that that Jupiter and and Cap or Jupiter should be debilitated in Capricorn but uh, because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn Right? Saturn, um, we could say, overrides Jupiter's authority and Jupiter's expansion, and, and again presents this limit, right? That there's there's this boundary, and so uh, you can desire everything, but uh, whether you accomplish your desires um, is is up to a, a higher a higher law, you could say. Um, Venus in Capricorn. You know, I really like Venus in Capricorn because uh, Venus is, you know, uh, the ruling planet of Taurus, right? The other, the other major Earth sign that I, I equate with Capricorn, I think, because they, you know, the 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 bull and and the uh, the goat have have a lot of commonalities, um, differences too, of course, but uh, Venus in Capricorn. I think yeah, it's just a is a beautiful time actually. Um, the the heart right is there, and putting the heart under a, a certain authority, right? Giving the heart guidance, um, you know, and and sometimes that's necessary because the heart just wants to expand and love, right? Um, it wants to, you know, sometimes has tendencies toward lavishness, right? Venus is the heart wants, wants uh, comfort, right? Wants security, right? So um, Venus and Capricorn, I think, you know, they, they really complement each other. And, and we've, and we've got that going on right now. And then of course we have Saturn, right? Saturn in Capricorn, Saturn is in, in its own house, right? Saturn has come home and Saturn is going to be um, moving through Capricorn and Aquarius over the next four or five years, right? And this is going to be a, I think, a really significant time, as it as it will give us a glimpse um, of, uh, you know, really of you know the next maybe twenty years. Um, it, it will really show us what we're what we're in for in in terms of going forward. Um, and and I don't I don't think of astrology in any way as a fortune telling device. Um, but what I do think it does is give us, again, the, the symbolic representation uh, of the energies that are around and at play. Um, I just learned the, the true definition of this, this old German word, Welt, Weltanschauung, right? Um, the, and some people think of it as the worldview, right? That it's, it's sort of the pervading... Um, understanding of humans of what's going on but the in original intent of Weltanschauung is how the world presents itself to us right? and and uh, this is I think very very different right it's what it's in and you could say it's almost what nature wants um, it's what it's what uh, the natural current is trying to express uh, which I think is a fascinating idea, right? I, I never quite thought about it in, in that way that there's 
you know, this that there's an intent of nature, right? I, I, I always thought nature was just beautiful, right? Um, but that it, it should have an intention, right, is I think a, a very, very wonderful idea to play around with. That the natural world is is communicating to us and is trying to tell us um, its desires, you could say, right? If we could link up the second chakra with the fourth chakra, right? The second chakra, Jupiter, the fourth chakra, Venus, of course, the heart. Right? If we could link those two things up, right? The desire and the heart, um, you know, we would, uh, I think, be be really on to something. And, and that's that's kind of what the, that speaks to me is that, that desire of nature. So Mercury retrograde, right? What to say about Mercury retrograde? Mercury retrograde, um, it, it, I don't know how you've been feeling it. Um, I always almost immediately know when Mercury is going retrograde. I've certainly had the technical difficulties, but that's not necessarily new. I think a lot of us have been having technical difficulties just because a lot of us have been dealing with technology that uh, we, we haven't normally been dealing with. Right, we wouldn't otherwise deal with um, uh, all this, you know, online communication and shifting and having to buy new hardware to adapt to uh, these changing conditions, right? So, you know, technical difficulties are technical difficulties, but the communication breakdowns have also been phenomenal. Um, uh, the... Uh, the, the, the trying to get of any, anything of, of, of a paperwork nature done has been, um, you know, baffling. And I, I thought it was pretty funny that that whole uh, situation with the Robin Hood and the GameStop and all of that was um, coinciding with this, with this Mercury retrograde. So, you know, People like to, again, they like to link up these specific instances and say, oh, that's Mercury retrograde, that's Mercury retrograde. But uh, I think we can understand it as, you know, a going deeper, um, take, really needing to take the time to listen, um, things, things kind of being brought to the surface uh, of maybe we were ignoring before and now we can't ignore and, and that to me is really the significance, you know, if you think about how these planets travel around the sun, Mercury, when it goes retrograde, is, is the time where it's passing between the, the Earth and the sun, right? Mercury is at its closest when, when it's retrograde. Uh, and then, of course, it, it travels on the other side of the sun. And I, I, I sometimes like to think of, you know, Mercury uh, is, is going back to, to pick up the next message that we're going to get. Um, Mercury, they say, is the messenger of the gods, right? Uh, messenger of the sun. And Mercury is coming back around and saying, oh, hey, you know, I just uh, stopped by the post office and there was a package for you. And when it's going retrograde, that's when it's dropping off that package and saying, here's the, here's the message, you know, here's the information, here's, here's what you need to know. So... Um, we, we've kind of been getting that right now. Here's what you need to know. And, you know, it's up to you to open the box. It's up to you to believe the message, right? But a lot of people have been getting, getting new information. Um, remember, sometimes things, when they don't work out, it, it's actually working out in your favor. Um, you know, you're, you're trying, to, trying to refinance your condo and... Um, and, and, you know, constant back and forth. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's not going to work out, but uh, that, that not working out, you know, most likely is, is to your benefit. Um, you know, it's not, it's not necessary, right? Um, just doing something out of convenience and not really finding much. And uh, yeah, just let it go, right? Just, just drop it. Um, so, Let's see what else is in store. You know, we just had the new moon. Um, we just had that new moon uh, on the 11th, so just under a week ago. And we can track this this moon. I just saw um, that moon and Mars last night. I got got a peek of the moon. Um, yeah, that that new moon 
uh, was there in Capricorn and then uh, quickly the sun moved into Aquarius and um, the moon's moving on and the moon now over there conjunct Uranus right so uh, you might be uh, feeling that that kind of you know consciously emotional <laughs> um, uh, aware of your aware of your emotional needs right aware of your emotional nature right now um, and and that might feel uh, a little bit assertive right you might be feeling a little bit like you need to express yourself um, and express that emotional nature and um, share that emotional nature and that's what that moon uranus in aries is all about right um, that's you know that's going on these these this next day and a half uh, you know feeling that and then you know Mars I know it looks like Mars is, is going into Taurus but uh, not quite yet it's got to get up it's got to catch up to the Pleiades um, you got it about another um, about another 10 days before Mars gets over there in, into Taurus proper um, but but Mars Mars and Aries Right, feeling Mars and Aries, you've got, you know, uh, lots of energy uh, as Mars is going to be leaving Aries. That's that's my that's my call, and I I think Mars is going to be leaving Aries. Um, the Moon is going to be coming over there, um, conjunct Mars and Aries, and really, you know, just feeling a little bit of the fire, um, feeling a little bit of that that fire in the belly, and the Moon and the Sun. Uh, we attribute to the solar plexus, and so you've got the moon and the sun as kind of dual aspects, and they reside in the solar plexus, right? We could call it the solar lunar plexus, or the sol lunar plexus. Let's make a, a new word, and so in that sol lunar plexus, right, you you have this, you know, a little bit more of a spark, um, and you know. I just recommend belly breathing right? inhale exhale try to feel the diaphragm move right? let the rib cage expand let the belly drop um, really try to feel your posture nice and vertical you know sit up tall and, and let yourself breathe uh, because you might be feeling like there's a there's something you need to do um, and I'm not saying that you don't need to do it but uh, you might you might find a, a way to, to use that energy to your advantage um, you know to really contain you know a pressure cooker um, you know you got you got to have a lot of strength to contain that that amount of pressure um, so you know know your limits Let's say it that way know your limits um, and that's why that breathing is so good because your breath reveals the boundary right your, your breathing tells you okay that's that's far enough right I was I was doing some shoveling the other day I had to dig out my car and you know it's at one point I had to stop because I could just tell my breathing needed a moment to uh, to regain its composure so you know this is what's going on. Um, there's not a lot going on down there, um, but uh, you know, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, right? Months ahead, right? We're gonna be seeing a little action coming through these these beautiful signs, right? We've got uh, Pluto is still in Sagittarius. Right about here, we can let's pull up Pluto really quickly. Right, that that subconscious mind. Right there, and you can and you can see there in in Sagittarius. Right there's the constellation there. I'm circling with the cursor, but that's Pluto right there in in Sagittarius. And the subconscious mind and that fire, right? It's it's clarifying ideology, right? It's clarifying um, the the philosophical mind, right? Um, try to try to know 
know where you are, right? If, if you don't know where you are, um, uh, somebody else can easily tell you. And they might be telling you something um, that's to their advantage, and, but maybe not to yours. Right? So Pluto is, you know, really calling us to task, right? To take responsibility for our, our own actions, um, for how we determine uh, right from wrong, right? how we determine um, just from unjust, right? and, and really seeing, you know, uh, the, the truth of things, right? And I, I know that that's a big word with a lot of interpretations, and um, it, it's important to understand. Again, this this idea that there there are certain factors, there are certain forces, right? Capricorn, there are certain factors um, that we have to take into account, right? That are that are not easily uh, uh, made to move, right? So, really staying mindful uh, of of those in inherent factors of nature, Let's just say it that way, right? That means uh, you you have you have the say over over yourself, right? You you have the say over your body, over your mind, and you're you're allowed to say no, right? And that's always been the case, um, but know know that now more than ever, right? So. That's uh, that's Pluto, right? And and you know, talking about Pluto, Pluto says the Lord of the underworld. Um, that archetype is 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 always uh, a a more serious one to deal with. So, you know, having trouble choosing my words there because I wanna I wanna you know operate with the utmost respect when I'm addressing the Lord of the underworld. Um, not wanting to misspeak there and, and really give uh, give proper voice to that energy, right? That's that's where Pluto comes from. You you get to say no. All right, so um, that's that's what's going on, folks. Um, that's a little you know just taking the temperature of the of the time, and you know you can you can see this in the night sky, you know, go, go look for the moon, uh, tonight, tomorrow, and you're going to see the red planet, right? It looks orange really from, from our, our perspective. But, um, if you're in the, the Northern hemisphere, um, the moon and Mars is going to be a beautiful sight. And then you can know that, um, that Uranus is, is up there in the mix too. And, you know, don't think I forgot Neptune. Um, Neptune over there in Aquarius conjunct the sun, right? Uh, maybe use some of that that you know strong emotional energy in the sol lunar plexus uh, to to envision something beautiful, right? To imagine a, a brighter future, right? To think about something that you want to create, right? That that is you know um, of a of a benevolent form, right? that you, you can share with people, right? But this is a, a vision for the future, right? The sun, Neptune, in Aquarius, right? Vision for the future. Yeah, that's a, it's a great way to, to end this video here. Just a, a, a beautiful image uh, of what's possible. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your, your comments, your questions. I uh, am so grateful to be able to use this platform to share something that I, I find so useful and just want to say thank you. Peace.